we talk about huh. SpaceX? God bless you. Um, you have a bunch of critical milestones coming up. Um, yeah, in fact, uh, there's an important, a very exciting launch um, that uh, is maybe happening tonight. So if, 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 that, if the weather is, is holding up, then I'm going to leave here, head to Cape Canaveral uh, for the, um, the, the Polaris Dawn mission, which is a private mission funded by Jared, um, Jared Isaacman, and he's an um, awesome guy. And, and this will be the first time, uh, the, the first private, the first, first commercial spacewalk, um, and, and it'll be at, at the highest altitude uh, since Apollo. So it's the furthest from Earth that anyone's gone. Um, yeah. And you, you know, what so, comes so, after that? Let's assume that's successful. And I sure hope so, man. Yeah. Um, no pressure. <laughs> um, yeah, we're, you know, absolutely, you know, astronaut prior, astronaut safety is, man, if I had like all, all, the, all the wishes I could say about, that would be the one to, to put on. So, you know, space is dangerous. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the next milestone after that would be the next flight of Starship, um, which, um, you know, Starship is, the next flight of Starship is ready to fly. We are waiting for regulatory approval. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It, 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 it really should not be possible to build a giant rocket faster than the paper can move from one desk to another. <laughs> so. That stamp is really hard. Approved. Yeah. You ever see that movie Zootopia? Approved. You ever see that movie Zootopia? There's like a sloth. That yes. <laughs> He's coming in for the approval. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then he uh, accidentally tell a joke, and, the, and I was like, oh no, this is no, going to go. take a long time. Sorry, sorry. Um, but yeah, the, the Zootopia, you know, if, uh, you know, the funny thing is, like, so I went to the DMV uh, about, I don't know, a year later after Zootopia and to get my whatever, license renewal, and the guy, in, in an exercise of incredible self-awareness, had the sloth from Zootopia in his... Um, <laughs> in his cube? In, 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 in his cube, and, and he was actually swift. Yeah. <laughs> with the, with the so, mandate, beat the sloth. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> beat um, personal now. agency. Personal agency. No, I mean, it, sometimes people like think the, you know, the government is um, more competent than it, than it is. I'm not saying that there aren't competent people in the government. They're just in an operating system that is inefficient. Um, once you move them to a more efficient operating system, they, they, their output is dramatically greater, as we've seen, except for, you know, when... East Germany was reintegrated to, into, with West Germany, and, and, and the same people um, were vastly more prosperous uh, with a basically half capitalist uh, operating system. So, um, but I mean, for a lot of people, they're, they're, like their maybe most direct experience with, with the government is the DMV. Um, and, and, and then the important thing to remember is that the government is the DMV at scale. Right. That's the government. Got the mental picture. How much do you want to scale it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Elon, <laughs> sorry, can you go back to Chamath's um, uh, question on Starship? So you, you announced just the other day Starship going to Mars in two years. And yeah, by the way. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, four years for a crude uh, aspirational launch uh, in yeah, the next window. I mean, and how much is the government involved? I mean, I'm, NASA I'm, not, I'm, involved? Saying, I'm not saying like set your watch by these, not, you know. Uh, but these, uh, but it, based on our current progress, where with Starship we were able to successfully reach orbital velocity twice, uh, we were able to achieve soft landings of the, the booster and the ship in, in water, uh, and that's despite the ship having you know half its flaps cooked off. Um, so you can see the video on the X platform; it's quite exciting. Um, so, you know, we we, we think we'll be able to have. To, to launch reliably and repeatedly and quite quickly. Um, and the, the, the fundamental holy grail breakthrough for rocketry, for to, the, what the fundamental breakthrough that is needed for life to become multiplanetary is a, a rapidly reusable, reliable rocket. R -r -r -r. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a pirate somehow. Um, <laughs> throw a pirate in there. Um, the, so, 
with Starship is the first rocket design where success is one of the possible outcomes with full reusability. Um, so if we, you know, for any given project, you have to say, this is the circle, so we've got Venn diagrams. Um, it has a circle, and it is success, the success dot in the circle um, <laughs> is, is success in the set of possible outcomes. That uh, you know, sounds pretty obvious, but there are often projects where that, that is, success is not in the set of possible outcomes. Um, and so, so Starship, not only is fully, full reusability in the set of possible outcomes, it, it is being proven with each launch. Um, and and, and uh, I'm confident it will succeed. It's simply a matter of time. And you know, if, if, if we can get some improvement in the speed of regulation, we, we could actually move a lot faster. Um, uh, so that would, that would be very helpful. And, and in fact, if, if, this, if, not, if something isn't done about um, reducing regulation and, and sort of speeding up approvals, and to be clear, I'm not talking about anything unsafe. It's simply the processing of the safe thing can be done at a, as, as fast as the rocket is built, not slower. Then, uh, then, then we could become a space-faring civilization and a multi-planet species and, ultimate, and, and be out there among the stars in the future. And there's, you know, it's, it's, it's just very, like, it's incredibly important that we have things that that we find inspiring, that you look to the future and say the future is going to be better than the past, things to look forward to, and like, like kids are a good, a good way to assess this. Like, what are kids fired up about? And if you can say, you know, you you could, you know, you, you could be an astronaut on Mars. You you could maybe one day uh, go beyond the solar system. Um, we could make Star Trek, Starfleet Academy real. Um, that is an exciting future. That is inspiring. Um, you know, you, you just, I mean, you need things that move your heart. Right. Um, yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Let's do it. Fuck. Yeah. I mean, it, like, like, life can't just be about solving one miserable problem after another. Right. There's got to be things that, that you look forward to as well. Yeah. Uh, and and do, you, do you think you might have to move it to a different jurisdiction and to, and to move faster? I've always wondered if, like... It's, and rocket technology is considered an advanced weapons technology, so we can't just go do it, you know... In another country. Yes. In a, you, yeah, interesting. And if we don't do it, other countries could do it. I mean, they're uh, so far behind us, but theoretically, there is a national security, you know, justification here. If, if somebody can put their thinking caps on, like, do we want to have this technology that you're building and the team's working so hard on stolen by other countries and then, you know, maybe they don't have as much red tape? I, w I wish people were trying to steal it. Um, so, that no, no one's trying to steal it. It's, huh. it's just too, it, it, this is too, it's too crazy, basically. Yeah. Um, and that's for you. Yeah, it's way too yeah. crazy. Elon, what do you think um, is going on that led to Boeing building the Starliner the way that they did. They were able to get it up. <laughs> but, but not complete. But can't complete. They can't finish. Can't finish. And I don't now understand. you're going to have to go up and finish. Um, um, well, I mean, I think Boeing is a company that is, you know, they actually do so much business with the government, they have sort of impedance match to the government. So they're, they're like basically one notch away from the government, maybe two. They're not far from the government from an efficiency standpoint because they derive so much of their revenue from the government. Um, and a lot of people think, well, SpaceX is super dependent on the government. And I, I actually, no, most of our revenue is commercial. I think at least up until perhaps recently, because they have a new CEO who actually shows up in the factory. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the CEO before that, I think, had a degree in accounting and, did, and never went to the factory right. and didn't know how airplanes flew. <clears throat> Um, so I think if you are in charge of a company that makes airplanes fly and uh, a spacecraft go to orbit, you need to know then the it can't be a total mystery as to how they work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, I'm like, sure, if somebody's like running Coke or Pepsi and, and they're like great at marketing or whatever, um, that's, 
that's fine because it was, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not a sort of technology dependent business. Um, you know, or if, if they're running a, you know, financial consulting and their degrees in accounting, that makes sense. Um, but I think, uh, you know, if, if, you're gonna, if you're the cavalry captain, you should know how to ride a horse. Pretty basic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty difficult. <laughs> it's like, so, it's disconcerting if the cavalry captain just falls off the horse, you know? <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to inspire of the team. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm scared of horses. Gets on backwards. I'm like, oops. <laughs> um, sh shifting gears to AI.